Thank you. Humanity is at a crossroads. Over the last 200 years, we've been able to achieve what in earlier times would have been described as miracles. Through our mastery of science and technology, we've been able to achieve the unimaginable. We've been able to condense journeys from days to hours. We've learned how to fly. We've even taken steps beyond our own planet. We've built vast metropolises of tens of millions of people. We've eradicated previously incurable diseases and harnessed electricity to give us energy, light, and warmth. We've even changed the way we communicate to transcend time and space. The acceleration we've seen in digital innovation and change is faster than ever before. And digital technology is changing how we communicate, how we socialize, work, and play. And with these great accomplishments, we can no longer ignore the consequences. Through this increased efficiency and productivity, we've been able to increase wealth and social mobility. And with advances in healthcare, we've almost doubled the life expectancy over the last 200 years. And populations have reached unprecedented levels. So this poses a stark challenge. Do we have the resources to cope with this vast population? And if not, whose responsibility is it to find a solution? Economists might sum this as a problem of supply and demand. As a result of our success, we need more than we can provide. Today, I'd like to share with you a story how I've seen this in my own experience in my own profession, surgery. As a reconstructive surgeon, I've seen these challenges firsthand. Did you know that five billion people around the world lack access to safe surgical care? Five billion people. That's 70% of the world's population who can't even access simple surgical care as and when they need it. But before I go on, I want to tell you, this is not going to be a story of pessimism and helplessness. Today is a story of hope. Because I believe we have the capacity to achieve great things. And no matter how big these challenges are, we have the resourcefulness to find the solutions. So let's go back to this problem of supply and demand. What it really boils down to is that there's just not enough surgical expertise to go around. There aren't enough surgeons. Despite huge advances in technology in healthcare and surgery, and new techniques and more specialist surgeons treating the most complex diseases, the population is soaring, and healthcare expectations rising. Surgeons just can't keep up. Let's go to West Africa, home of over 245 million people. It was reported that there are only 10 qualified pediatric surgeons. 10. The numbers are astounding. But this is not a problem for just that part of the world. All of you sitting here may think, it's really sad and unfortunate, but here I can access surgery when I need it through my local hospital or clinic. But the harsh reality is that's not true. And the NHS is struggling under the sheer demand of the population and its requirements. Today, you may wait a long time to get the surgery that you need. Or you may have to travel vast distances to get it. Or you may not even be able to access it at all. Rationing is becoming an everyday reality of all healthcare systems everywhere in the world, developed and developing. So what's the solution? How do we redistribute this expertise around the world? How do we force multiply what we already have? I believe that solutions in science technology don't just happen. They're driven by a reason, by a purpose. Look at how the internet and mobile technology has transformed how we communicate. It's broken barriers of time and space, and we can connect to anyone anywhere in the world. A couple of years ago, I started to ask myself this question and started to think, these amazing breakthroughs, can they not also make a difference in healthcare? Why don't we harness the power of augmented reality and digital technology? Augmented reality, which was prevalent in the gaming industry, and digital technology, which was connecting people around the world. And so we did. 
and my team and I built an award-winning augmented reality platform, Proximy, that allows a surgeon to virtually transport himself into any clinical setting anywhere in the world to visually and practically interact with another doctor in real time, guiding them through a procedure step by step. And all they needed was simply a mobile device, a laptop or a computer. We were able to create virtual presence so that people could interact in a way that mimicked how they would collaborate together as if they were in the same room. I want to show you a video just to illustrate this, but I want to warn you that there is some graphic images, so I apologize. <laughs> here we go. I'll be from here. This is the reception of a kidney tumor. It has to go three centimeters. Okay. Show me again. Okay. If you see here, that's the upper part, that is the most outer part of your tumor. Okay. Yes. So it is three centimeters deep. So this should be three centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I so you need to cut off the 3.5 to get a negative margin. I'm going to show you anyway on the other side. And so we were really excited about this technology, but we were more excited about the impact it had. For me, I believe it's not just about how great the technology is, it's the impact it can make on people's lives. And we started to catch first glimpses of this in a case in Gaza. Ali was a young man whose hand was mutilated by a bomb blast injury. He was a sole breadwinner of his family and had ambitions of becoming a nurse. And these dreams were crushed within minutes. Medical resources were extremely scarce in Gaza, but Dr. Hafez, a local surgeon, was committed to helping him and he was able to get a hold of this technology and to link it with Dr. Hassan in Beirut. Now, Dr. Hassan could virtually scrub in and illustrate and demonstrate what needed to be happen happening step by step. Together, they reconstructed Ali's hand. Now, Ali has a functioning hand and he's pursuing his ambitions of becoming a nurse. This story won the Foreign Press Association Science Story of the Year because of how technology was making a difference in people's lives, no matter where they were, and no matter how scarce the access was. We've also seen its impact in other parts of the world, and in South America, in a town of Trujillo, north of Peru, where children were waiting many, many months to get access to cleft lip and palate surgery. It was because there was just not enough local doctors trained in these techniques. With the help of a charity, we were able to connect them with a surgeon in California. And this cleft surgeon was able to join in remotely, guiding them and mentoring them through the latest techniques in cleft surgery. Now, they're able to deliver this care for their local population independently, confidently, and competently. And again, I want to remind you here, this is not a problem for just that part of the world or the developing world. In the US alone, it was reported that by 2030, they're gonna need an extra 100,000 surgeons just to cope with routine surgical procedures. Here in the UK, we've also seen its use, and I'd like to introduce you to Edward. Edward was a lovely, frail old gentleman who needed skin cancer reconstruction to his face. This was not available at his local hospital, and he was told that he would have to travel vast distances to a teaching hospital to get this care. Edward was scared and his family were concerned. But through this technology, we were able to connect an expert surgeon from the teaching hospital who guided the local surgeon through that procedure. Edward was able to get the care that he needed locally. We were able to save money with transport, and we were able to upskill the local surgical community. But our ambitions are bigger than this. Remote collaboration is not just about demonstrating a procedure. It's about connecting surgical and medical communities all around the world to build bridges that are going to help us to radically solve these problems of supply and demand. Through this free sharing of expertise, we want to upskill doctors around the world faster and quicker with a broader range of skills. Some may dismiss this as science fiction, virtual surgery, augmented surgery, telesurgery, remote surgery. These sound like words from a film, but they're not. These are technological realities in the here and now that can radically improve how we can access healthcare, no matter where we are. If I ask one thing of you today, and of my children who are here in the audience, is that you need to believe in miracles. If 30 years ago someone told you with this simple device you could voice text, 
video call, call anyone around the world, check your email, listen to music, bank, shop online, you wouldn't believe them. But now we know different. And with Proximy and this augmented reality platform, we're just starting to see the potential. We're just getting started. Thank you.